Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan, so if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the Discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter. Social media. Follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. One mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about episodes five and six, the final two episodes of the Max Original series, Full Circle. So first off, I want to start by apologizing for getting this one out late. I ain't even gonna hold y'all up. I had a weekend. <laughs> I had a weekend, a whole Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing, and it was a lot more than I was. <laughs> I would say more than I was able to handle, but. It was enough to where I just wasn't able to get videos out. I was, I'm sorry. Like I was like, prepare. I had a party at my house for the UFC 291 and the Crawford Spence fight, and just preparing for it, having it, and then the next day afterward, it was like there was no, <laughs> there's just no energy in life for videos. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what happened. But I'm here. I'm ready to knock out, knock this last one out because I kind of wanna, I kind of wanna uh, lay out not just uh what all happened but kind of like give a, my overall thoughts on what I thought of this show in general because I think it was almost kind of like a unique experiment a bit but um I want to start by laying out what I believe happened you know the whole the whole plot essentially as I've done periodically throughout these videos and then I'll talk about specific aspects of the show in general that I liked or didn't like and of the episodes the these two episodes that I liked and didn't didn't like but overall like I said last week well, yeah, it's, it's still, it's not last week anymore. <laughs> it's not last week anymore. Last video. Uh, this show kind of felt more like a college writing exercise to me than anything else. And, and, and in that regard, I think it was successful. Um, was it a good TV show? We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But, you know, now that it's all over, I want to talk about how everything is connected, right? What, what all came full circle in these final two episodes? So I'm just going to kind of like lay out what happened, uh, I think really the mystery is what happened uh, that led to the events of the show more so than what happened on the show. Because I think we all followed everything that happened on the show. Like the 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 the, the uh, botched kidnapping, the thing with Nick being Derek's son, uh, figuring out that Gene uh, was sabotaged by Sam and not by Jen. Like all, all those things. I think those things are pretty clear. It's the stuff that's kind of like uh, where they fill in the background information that was murky. So... Uh, let's talk about it. So back in the day, uh, I'm, I'm going to by and large read from what I have written here, but I, that's what I do anyway. <laughs> but uh, back in the day, Jeff and Gene wanted to build this condo in the Essequibo uh, area in Guiana. That was the name of the final episode, Essequibo. We hear it all throughout the series. There were a lot of bribes and whatnot going on in order to make that happen, including uh, Mahabir's husband. Uh, I think his name was, it started with an R. I want to. It was something like Raymond, but not Raymond, something close to that. <laughs> but he was a politician who they were bribing and he would rewrite zoning laws to get people kicked out of the land so that they could build these condos there. People like Louis, Natalia, and Javier. Uh, one of the people who refused to leave their land was Clarence. Clarence was the old guy who was playing uh, chess with Jeff in the park, who we know is also behind the plot to kidnap uh, Jeff's grandson, Jared. And when Clarence refused to leave his land, Mahabir's husband had his... Uh, 
grandson kidnapped and murdered. And it, it happened at 1.11 in the morning, which was the purpose of why that, why that time was so imper important for Mahabir and her spooky fucking spells and shit. So um, that's significant to that time. Uh, and then Clarence supposedly responded by cursing them. And then we also know that uh, her uh, brother-in-law was killed and her husband was killed. I think that, that's, that's, that's it, right? A brother-in-law and husband. Uh, but here's where I think things are unclear. And I kind of do believe that this is the show's fault. Why would Clarence and Mahabir work together to kidnap Jared? Because Jeff is responsible for evicting people from the land, for sure. It, like, no matter what way you want to look at it, was he directly kicking people out? No. But he was he was the impetus for uh, the, the, the structure that was going to be built that necessitated people being kicked out of their land. But he didn't kill anybody. Uh, the person most affiliated with the person responsible for the death of Clarence's grandson is Savitri Mahabir. So why are they working together? I don't, I don't know. To I don't know. I thought that was weird. It, it seemed to me like them two should be going back at each other. And I feel like the connection between uh, the Brown family and uh, the Mahabir family and the Guiana stuff is, is it's too loose. Like, it's like, okay, they're loosely connected via bribes to build condos, but the Mahabir family is way more directly connected to the way in which Clarence was wrong. So like that, I, I felt like that was a little bit murky. But it could be a thing where it's like, hey, uh, Savitri, if you help me get revenge on uh, uh, the Brown family by, by getting Jared, the grandson, I'll lift the curse that I put on you. Maybe it was something like that. But I feel like they weren't clear with that. But whatever. Uh, but, and then, like, does he, I don't know how much help he would possibly need. I mean, he was able to get Jeff to New York to play chess with him. So, I mean, he, he's capable of doing a lot on his own. But anyway, like we discussed in the last video, uh, Sam snitched on Jean in order to, to protect her father about the bribes. And uh, that got him in trouble He because he was a police officer. That got him in trouble with the police, and he shot himself in the foot. And I think it was like he shot himself in the foot so that, it would allow him to get disability money if it happened on the job, but he like lost his pension because of the bribes and shit like that. I think it was something to that effect. Uh, and then that's where, and then from that point on, that's where the show starts. Like we know at that point, like I said, the botched kidnapping that went left. We learned about Nick being Derek's illegitimate son. Then we got the subplot with Javier, uh, Louis, and Natalia brought over to work off <laughs> work off the debt of them being brought over, which is a really shitty scam by Ma Beer. And then they get caught up in the kidnapping and they ultimately just want to go back home. Uh, we also learned that Garmin is in heavy debt to the casino and he's been unable to get the money to pay them from Ma Beer, money that he is owed. Uh, and he, so he's really invested in the successful ransom for Jared. So I kind of think that about sums it up more or less uh, what was going on here. Let me know if I left anything out. But I think broadly speaking, I covered everything that, w that really is 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 what the show uh, was comprised of. Now, I kind of want to get into what I liked and what I didn't like. So uh, the big headline of what I didn't like, and if you, this is going to be no surprise if you watch the first two videos, was the Melody Harmony character. Like, okay, so like I said last week, it's very clear to me they want to use her quote-unquote intuitiveness well, they want us to see it as intuitiveness. Like, oh, wow, she's so intuitive. She's a great cop. She can read people. But what it really is, is since there's so much going on in the plot and so many moving pieces, they have her just recite the things that we're supposed to know because I don't think they have time to actually just have those things at the show. So they'll have her just kind of be like, oh, so what's happening is blah, 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 blah. Then she just explains everything. Like she explained what happened to Jean. In this episode, she explained, uh, I'm sorry, in this, in these two episodes collectively, uh, that she, that's just what she is. She's a person who explains what, what the, what the people in charge of the show want us to know, but just don't have on the screen. And what really did it for me this week, where I was really irritated by her, it's like the very first scene, I think episode, episode five, she's been called into, um, I don't know, whoever it is that it's like an Asian guy that I think is like above... Gaffigan's character, Manny, uh, I guess he's above me, he's the chief of police, whatever, right? But she gets called in his room, I mean his office, <laughs> gets called in his room. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Um, <laughs> time for another psyche veil. Uh, but she gets called to his office, and uh, Manny's in there, and a couple other people. And like, they don't, <laughs> they don't say nothing to her. She just comes in and just starts. <laughs> 
<laughs> just starts figuring shit out. <laughs> she walks in, she's like, no, wait, no, they did tell her they were doing a raid on the Mahabir uh, compound. And she's like, look, that's the thing. She always looks around like, hmm. <laughs> So you called me in here because we're doing the raid, but Manny's gonna run it and not me. And then no one said anything. And then she's like, wait, that's not it. <laughs> like, dog, if you don't get the fuck out of here with this character. <laughs> she's like, she's like, no, she said something like, uh, do you you guys want us to like vouch for like bank records and stuff like that? <laughs> like no one says anything. And she's like, of course, because you would never expect to find that. Cause <laughs> Scooby Doo shit. Nah, I guess it's like when it's like uh this is gonna really age myself here. But I watched the reruns sometimes. It's like La Lassie. Do you guys remember Lassie? When Lassie would bark and the owner Timmy would just like intuit everything <laughs> that was happening. Like Lassie would be like bark bark, and then, <laughs> and then Timmy's like, what? So and so fell down the well and they broke their leg and they need our help, but then we don't, we're all out of fresh rope to. <laughs> To drop down, so we have to go to the store to buy rope first. Is that what you're saying, Lassie? Like that's that's what she would be doing, dog. Nah. She's like, you're not expecting. <laughs> I just love the suspicious look on her face. You're not expecting to find anything, uh, because Mahabir wouldn't do that. No, no, that's not what this is about. <laughs> She's like, no, this is not what this is about at all. I'm just like, this is ridiculous, dog. Like no one say anything to this motherfucker. She's just like. Looking around and just telling everybody, like, okay, so, like, her sole purpose there was to tell us what the plan is and then to set up a future conversation, they, which they start to have the conversation. Then she gets, she uh, gets to think about Javier's uh, uh, leg, uh, his ankle bracelet being tampered with and th that whole thing. So they set that up. But, like, that scene was where I was dumb. I was like, yo, fuck this character, dog. This is ridiculous. <laughs> she was like, wait a minute. You're not expecting to fight <laughs> Oh my like, dog, y'all better stop with this fucking character, dog. But like, man. Oh, okay, but, but yeah. Also, I had to keep reminding myself that her job is postal inspector. Like, because otherwise, the way she behaves, the way she's like questioning people and the, the whole, everything about it, you think she was a regular fucking cop. Why is a postal inspector even... <laughs> Why is a postal inspector even working this case? What the fuck does this have to do with the mail? <laughs> like, and I'm like, why is no one... Like, I feel like no one else is interested in that question. Like, she's constantly like, yeah, I'm a United States postal inspector. I'm like, why the fuck are you here? Don't you have some mailboxes to be looking under? Like, what, what is this? But she's like an actual fucking cop. Like, I, I don't know, dude. But it doesn't matter um, that she's a postal inspector that's working this case that she's not supposed to be working because she gets suspended anyway. Because her ex reported her for popping up again, which we saw, uh, I don't know, was that an episode? I don't know, episode, the episodes kind of bleed together when they release two at a time, but apparently she has a history of these, like, domestic issues where she's just getting reported, which is what led to the psyche valve in the first place, which, you know, what led to Manny burying it, and then eventually it gets out, and that's what actually is, um, the, uh, thing that she was originally called to the office about at the beginning of episode five was to find out that she was suspended. And I remember watching that scene and thinking like, how is that not enough to get fired? Like you've got like multiple domestic cases or whatever it is of issues, complaints, whatever against you. You still keep doing it. She goes completely outside of the bounds of her, her power constantly. And then now it's like, it just keeps going and going and going. And then now he's looking at the psyche valve, like what? I, I should have got this from Manny. I'd have probably fired you a long time ago. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, man. He's dead now. But like, I just maybe like, what do you maybe wonder? What do you have to do to get fired as a cop? Like killing an unarmed black guy for no reason? That's like worst case scenario. You're gonna get suspended with pay. <laughs> so like, what you gotta do to get suspended as a cop? And then I'm like, oh yeah, she ain't a fucking cop. <laughs> like, like, what? Like this show, man. This show is wild to me, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, yeah, she later visits Sam in, like, an unofficial capacity, like, kind of leading with, like, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm suspended, yeah, so I'm suspended, so I'm just here to irritate you for my own, <laughs> my own personal reasons, because <laughs> I really want to try to get my job back, so I'm just here to irritate you on my own time, and I'm just like, why are you even talking to a civilian, Sam? Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I, okay, <laughs> I, I'm done, I'm done laughing at this character for now. Um, but another thing I didn't like about this show 
uh, was that it seemed to have stuff that it depicted as like big reveals, like these big moments that I thought were already pretty obvious. Now, again, the idea of something being a big reveal, it's kind of almost subjective in that they might mean it to be a reveal, but I might have already seen enough clues to land at that place, even though they're not expecting me to land at that place place ahead of time so it's kind of subjective like another person might watch it and be like okay yeah no that is a big reveal so it's like i don't really know but like i'm gonna give a couple of examples of what i'm talking about so at the beginning of episode five we see xavier <laughs> javier it's spelled xavier in the subtitles with an x that's why it's hard for me to remember they call him javier but uh, we see him on the phone with louis and natalia and garmin is in a room with him and he's got the call, the call on speaker and prior to the call, Garmin tells Javier that his escape plane has room for his family plus one. Then on the call, they tell Louis and Natalia that if they can bring $60,000, then they can be on Garmin's plane. Now, math tells me, math, very, very basic human math, that if there's room for Garmin's family plus one person, and Javier is the person that is calling Louis and Natalia and telling them to come bring $60,000 so they can get on the plane, math and common sense is telling me that the plan is to get the money and kill Louis and Natalia. And then Javier gets the, the extra seat on the plane, right? But that scene, like... Like, I'm not saying it was meant to be a reveal, but, like, they kill... I felt like when they kill... Uh, well, when it's revealed Garmin plans on killing Louis and Natalia, it seems like they play it like it's a big deal. Like, Javier's like, oh, my God, and, like... And he already, like, he ends up, like, machete, machete-eating <laughs> up uh, Garmin for it, which was a, a, a sick scene, by the way. But, like, I don't know. I Like, his shock at that moment, I'm like, you didn't put that together when he said there was one seat on the plane, but he got you telling your two friends <laughs> that they could get on if they break money? Like, you didn't put two and two together? I, I don't know. I, it makes me feel like I must have missed something. And, and uh, trust me, I'm sure if I did, y'all will tell me. <laughs> Because y'all motherfuckers love to tell me if I miss some shit. But I don't know, man. That like I that that played like a reveal to me, and I did I, I don't know. I I that was obvious to me. Uh, and I can't believe they left that $250,000 painting sitting in the grass. Uh but uh yeah, like I said, Louis Machete's uh garment all up, and then he lets Louis and Natalia take his place and garment's place on the plane. And like I said, they left that painting, and uh we actually close the show with uh, a shot of a pretty empty Essequibo with no condo but still has the big poster board advertising it so uh, that's what happened another example of uh, what I'm talking about with the reveals is when Gene and Jeff have it out and it comes to light that Sam is the person who who dimed him out now obviously I thought that was obvious because I was talking about it in the previous videos I'm like yeah so what's happening is Sam obviously <laughs> you know like I said that was obvious but it felt like a reveal in that moment, did it not? Like, I don't know. It, just, it felt like it wasn't just meant to be a reveal to Gene. It felt like a reveal for us as well, which obviously I was not surprised by that because I talked about it in the previous videos. But I will say that was a great scene for all the actors in that room, though. That was a really good scene. And and, and I don't want to be all completely negative either. Speaking of good scenes, after uh, Louis and Natalia try to use uh, Nick to get the $60,000 out of Derek, and Akit shows up, and then he gets shot, and they end up at the hospital. The doctor, uh, that scene where the doctor's asking Derek for, like, basic fucking information about Nick. He doesn't know anything. I thought that was a really cool scene. Uh, side note on all that. I feel like it was also murky whether or not Akit was dead. Now, y'all feel me on that? Because, like, I feel like in the scene, it very much looked like he was dying. But then, in the hospital... I feel like they said something like uh, he like he was still alive or he might be okay or something to that. that something was said that, he, that let me know that he was still alive in the hospital, I think. But then later, Mahabir asked about them when she's being interrogated, asked about him while she's being interrogated. And the two interrogators look at each other and then she pieces together that he's dead. I'm just like, what, what happened to I care? Like, I feel like he, as, as a whole, that character was underserved. He was kind of mistreated, but he always he was the only person that had good ideas about tracking people through their phone and stuff like that, logging into DoorDash or whatever that was. He had the good ideas, man, and he just didn't get a lot of screen time, which is a, which is a shame. But I mean, hey, he was great in uh, I'm a Virgo. Uh, so 
We also hear in this scene, the scene where um, they're at the hospital, that Jeff is visiting Clarence while they're there. And like that, I thought was kind of weird because I remember noting that the previous scene that we see Jeff in, they had just reconciled. It was after, so we have the scene where they, they reconcile, they discover that Sam is the person that snitched. Then the next time we see them, Jeff has Jeff has taken Gene to a restaurant. And he's like using his big celebrity star power to get a table at a restaurant that's not uh that that's full. And Gene's like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then the next scene, they're like, yeah, Jeff's at the hospital. I'm like, no, he's dinner with Gene. <laughs> it's just, it was just poorly edited. Like, I feel like maybe if we play out the restaurant scene, or we have him get a call at the during the restaurant scene that's like, hey. Uh, this thing happened with Derek and now everyone's at the, whatever. But like we see him entering the restaurant for a good time. And the next time we see him, they're like, yeah, he's at the hospital visiting the motherfucker he played chess with. Like he was just dinner with his brother two scenes ago. <laughs> but again, could be me just being picky. Uh, nitpicky, I should say. And then I also didn't like that they really undermined the Mahabir character as it got, uh, as we moved along through the show. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Making her look like more and more ridiculous and unreasonable to poor. I can't even take her seriously. Like last video, I complained about how silly she looked, uh, blaming a curse for everything instead of her very obvious actions. And then in this, in these pairs, in this pair of episodes, she's explaining how everything worked out. Like, yeah, we got the curse all figured out. We got all that shit taken care of. Everything's gonna be great. To a picture of her dead husband, and I'm just like, how am I supposed to take this lady seriously? <laughs> Like, what is happening? Like, it's already bad enough that she is that tied to this mumbo-jumbo voodoo bullshit that she's that, that she believes in it that tough. But I'm like, hey, that's her culture, whatever. But, like, <laughs> don't don't talk about it to, your, to a picture of your dead husband and I'm still, supposed to, I'm still supposed to take you seriously. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, all in all, I think this show was like a... A successful writing experiment, an ex a writing exercise. Like they, they successfully took something wildly convoluted and seemingly made it all come full circle, even with, I think, a couple of, of, of mistakes here or there, but barely noticeable ones. It does work if you just pay attention. It's just an uninteresting story with uninteresting characters. No, well, wasn't really worth it to me. A um, couple of quick thoughts. Uh, I really enjoyed the Ron character from the casino. We could have used more of him. I liked when he was wired up and he was going through that party saying everybody's like full names and affiliations. Like, hi, so-and-so, so-and-so, who are you here with? Like, I, I thought that was funny. And then I didn't like, I didn't like using the name of the episode, in, <laughs> the name of the show in one of the episodes. Like somebody said, we have a full circle here. And I just wagged my finger, don't, don't say the name of the show <laughs> in an episode. But yeah, uh, like I said, uh, if you're interested in looking at, at, at seeing this, 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 complex story come together if you could follow it uh without without watching me explain it. it it's 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 something but like i just i don't i don't see the value um unless you're somebody who's looking to maybe like draw inspiration from it or imitate it or imitate it in a complimentary sort of way but just like i, I don't know i don't think the story was that interesting i don't think the characters were that interesting they weren't given a ton of time the story's very basic i i, I think there's a lot of things like questions a lot of holes but again all of that is due to the fact that the focus is on the complexity of the story and making sure everything comes together at the end give the audience a little bit of oh which i don't give a fuck about that uh, and and more emphasis on that and less emphasis on the things that do matter to me, like these characters and a compelling story or something like that. So uh, that's my thoughts on the show. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And until next time, peace.